In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the bean scopes in Spring. We know that Spring is providing us the beans by instantiating them and configuring them depending on whatever values we provide. But then when is this happening and how is this happening? We're going to look at it in a bit more detail in this tutorial. So we've seen uh, this diagram earlier. We have a few objects that's managed by the Spring container and we have objects that is not managed by the Spring container. When you say managed by the Spring container, what we mean is any object can reference any object from the Spring container by providing the ID and then Spring provides an instance of that object that we request. So this is happening using the factory pattern that we saw earlier as well. Now note that uh, here we have an object that's actually referring to the factory, the application context. We had seen this diagram earlier with the bean factory over here. This block was the bean factory, but I've replaced it with the application context because we are coding with the application context. It's actually a bean factory with additional functionalities. So now the object makes a reference to the, you know, the application context in order to get an instance of the bean. Now the application context refers to the spring XML and then uh, it gets the information, gets the blueprint about the object, and then it creates the bean, and then it hands it over. So this is what we saw. Uh, this is actually the way in which a factory pattern works, and Spring can work this way, but actually this is not the default way in which Spring beans work. I'll just go over what is the default way in which the Spring uh, beans work, and then we'll have a look at how we can configure Spring to behave this way. Now, what actually happens by default is, see, we've seen the, you know, the triangle object and the point object initializations, and uh, we have actually initialized those objects using Spring. Now, what's actually happening there? So what's actually happening there is when we start the Spring container, when I say start, that is when I define the application context by providing an XML for that application context, what the application context does is it actually refers to the spring.xml. Okay, this is before we make a call to any get bean. Nothing has happened. It's just the initialization of the application context. It reads the spring XML and it looks at all the beans that are available in the spring XML and it actually creates them by itself. Note that there is still no call to the get bean. Okay, without any call, the application context during initialization itself has initialized all the spring beans that we have configured in the spring XML. Now, after that, when we have another object that's actually doing a get bean, then the application context hands over the bean that has already been initialized. So the creation of the beans happens when the application context is being initialized, not when the get bean is happening. So this is the default behavior of beans. Now this can be configured in different way. We can configure a bean to be initialized only when a get bean happens and we can also configure the application context itself to initialize beans only when the get bean happens. But as long as you're not doing any such configuration, the default behavior is that the application context creates all the beans in your XML when the context is being initialized. And then when the get bean happens, that's when the application context hands over the bean that it has already created and it already has. Now, this leads to a couple of points which we have to understand before we see how we can configure it differently. This leads to the concept of scopes. Now, there are two basic bean scopes in Spring. The first bean scope is called singleton. Now, the singleton is kind of analogous to the singleton pattern that we have in Java, but it's not fully the same. There are a couple of differences, we'll, we'll look at that. But basically what the singleton means is that once you have a Spring container, once you initialize an application context and then you give it a Spring XML, it's gonna look at all the beans in the XML and it's gonna initialize one bean per bean definition. And no matter how many calls are made to the get bean, the Spring container returns only that instance. It's not going to create new instances every time. There's only one instance that it's going to hand over for every call to the get bean. In our example, in our earlier tutorials, we had a triangle object initialized and we did a get bean of triangle. There was only one class that was doing a get bean. Say there was another class that was doing the get bean of the same triangle, it would have got the same object. Spring would not have created a new object. It would have got the same instance of the triangle object. And the way it's happening is, 
when the application context is initialized, it creates the triangle object then itself. It's, it doesn't wait for a get bean. The triangle object is already there and available. And no matter how many calls to the get bean of triangle is made, the same object is passed around. Okay, so this is the default and this is called as the singleton. By default, all beans in Spring are singleton. We can override the scope and provide other scopes, but if you do not specify any scopes, it behaves as a singleton and then there's only one instance per Spring container. The other scope that the beans have is called as prototype. Prototype is actually, uh, it works the other way. We have new beans that are created with every request. So say I define triangle as a prototype instead of the default singleton. Then what would happen is if another class made a call to the get bean and it passed the triangle ID, then spring container would create a new bean and then pass it to that class. So it's going to create new objects every time there is a get bean. So this is a prototype bean and then new beans are created with every request or with every reference. This is also important to note here. It doesn't have to be a get bean. Even if it's actually a part of a ref, then it's going to create a new instance. Say for example, we have uh, we have a zero point defined in our example, which stands for a point coordinate zero, zero. Now, if I had defined zero point as a prototype bean, and if that zero point was referenced in two other beans, each of those beans would have a different instance of that zero point object. So no matter if it's a, if it's a call to a get bean and you're getting the object, or if it's actually a reference and you're indirectly getting the object through the reference, if the bean is a prototype, there are new instances created for every request and every reference. So these are the two basic type of uh, scopes that are available. The first one is a singleton, which is the default, and the second one is the prototype. So the singleton default is what causes Spring to initialize all the beans during load time itself. So if a bean is defined as a singleton, when this context is being initialized, all the singleton beans are gonna get initialized during the initialization of the context itself, it does not wait for a get bean. However, if a bean is defined as a prototype, then Spring waits for the get bean to happen and only then it initializes a prototype, which makes sense because for every get bean, it has to do with the initialization anyway. So instead of doing a default initialization while the context is being created, it waits for the get bean. So every get bean creates a new instance or every reference creates a new instance. So these are the two basic bean scopes that Spring has. There are a few other scopes, which are the web aware scopes. Now, what I mean by web aware is Spring actually ties in very well with web applications. Say you have a JSP or a servlet application, you can use Spring to create all your servlets and to create objects related to your servlet application. Now, since it ties in well with the servlet APIs, Spring is capable of knowing when there is a new request, when there is a new session. So you can tie the bean scopes to the request and the session. So you have uh, a request scope where a new bean is created per servlet request. So Spring will be aware of when a new request is happening because it ties in well with the servlet APIs. And then depending on a request, it creates a new bean. So if you have uh, you know a bean, a get bean inside uh, request scope, then for every new request, there's going to be a new get bean. But as long as it's in the same request scope, the same bean is going to be used. Uh, same way for session, you can have a new bean per session. As long as there is one user accessing in a single session, no matter how many calls to the get bean happens in the code, only one bean is written. But if it's a new user in a different session, then a new bean is created. And the third one is a global session. This is applicable in the portlet context, where you have a global session and the individual portlet sessions. In that case, you can tie a bean to a global session. We're gonna look at these web aware scopes later on, but uh, I hope the basic scopes of uh, singleton and prototype are clear. So once again, to reiterate, singleton is the default scope for beans unless you specify it as a prototype. And what happens with singleton is when the application context is created, all the beans are initialized and kept ready. So when a get bean happens, the same bean is being sent for every get bean. So it doesn't create a new initialization for a get bean or a reference. But 
In the case of a prototype, when the context is being initialized, the bean does not get created. It gets created for every reference to a get bean or for every reference of an object that is dependent on this object. So the way to specify the scopes for any bean is to go to the bean definition and enter the scope over here. So let's say I uh, mark the scope as singleton. Now this is the default implementation. This is actually redundant. I don't have to do that because the default is singleton. But what I'm doing here is I'm specifying the scope of the bean by using the scope value here. Now I can specify the scope as prototype. Now when I specify the scope as prototype, this bean behaves like a prototype bean. Similarly, I can mark request session or global session over here in order to assign the scopes accordingly. There's one note about singleton. Um, there's a bit of difference in the way a singleton works in Spring when compared to the actual singleton pattern. The singleton pattern says that there is only one instance of the object uh, overall. But then here, when we talk about singleton, we are talking about a Spring container alone. You could have multiple Spring containers running in the same JVM, and each of those have uh, the same object configured and we have multiple instances of the object in the same JVM. So in that case, it's not actually pure singleton, but then singleton is just one of the words, one of the scopes that is used inside Spring in order to you know specify this kind of behavior, the behavior that in a particular Spring container, there's only one instance of the bean created and that is being used across different references.